The story of One Piece begins with a man who has been restrained. He is moments away from being executed, yet he carries a wide grin on his face. This man attained wealth, fame, power, and everything this world had to offer. The world knows him as Gold Roger, the one who has achieved the title of Pirate King. Before facing his inevitable demise, he relayed his final message to the world. If you seek his treasure, then you must find it. He left everything he has attained there. With that brief speech, the crowd entered a frenzy. From across the globe, countless people were inspired to become pirates, thus sparking the Great Pirate Age. Twelve years after the death of Gold Roger, there is a certain pirate ship docked on the harbor of a small village. This village is named Fusha Village, located on Dawn Island. A young boy named Luffy is determined to prove he is tough. He holds a knife in his hand. A particular pirate encourages Luffy to do whatever it is he is going to do. Luffy stabs himself directly under his eye, leaving the surrounding pirates shocked that he did such a thing. A celebration is then held at a local bar for Luffy's craziness and the pirate's greatness. Luffy says it didn't hurt, and the pirate who is waiting to see what Luffy would do calls Luffy a liar and tells him not to do something like that again. Luffy is not afraid of pain and asks the pirates to take him out to sea with them. The man who called Luffy a liar is Shanks, captain of the red-haired pirates. He mocks Luffy, telling him he doesn't have what it takes to become a pirate since he can't swim, and a pirate that is unable to swim is no good. Luffy counters by saying he just doesn't have to fall overboard. Besides, his punch rivals that of a pistol, though Shanks is left unimpressed. Shanks' crew tells Luffy how great it is to be a pirate, leaving Luffy in awe. But Shanks doesn't like his crew getting Luffy's hopes up. The pirates are actually on board with letting Luffy tag along on just one of their adventures. Asking their captain if Luffy can just join on one of their adventures, Shanks says he can make that happen, but that means one of them would have to give up their positions so Luffy could join. They quickly give up on persuading their captain and go back to celebrating. Shanks finally admits the reason he refuses to take Luffy to sea is because he's too young. Give it another 10 years and he will consider letting Luffy join his crew. Luffy continues to pout, and the only one who enlightens Luffy why Shanks is stern on not letting Luffy join is Ben Beckerman. Being a pirate is fantastic, he says, but it's also dangerous and deadly. Luffy still doesn't understand, then out comes Makino, the bar owner. She asks if Luffy would like something to eat, and Luffy being Luffy, of course would like some food, declaring he'll pay her back with his treasures once he becomes a pirate. As Shanks and Luffy eat, Luffy asks if Shanks is going to stay here. Since it's been almost a year since his crew used this place as their base, the red-haired pirates plan on setting sail a couple more times before leaving to head north. The celebration is put on hold when a group of bandits barge into the bar. Their leader, Higuma, has never seen a pirates before. He's not impressed by the red-haired pirates. Meanwhile, Luffy eats a certain fruit. Higuma demands 10 barrels of liquor. But Makino ran out since she served all she had to the pirates. Feeling guilty, Shanks offers Higuma the last bottle. Higuma feels disrespected. His immediate reaction is to destroy the bottle, dousing Shanks in alcohol. Yet again, we see Luffy still eating the same fruit while everyone is focused on the rising tension. Higuma boasts of his achievements, claiming he killed 56 people and has a bounty of 8 million berries. Shanks is concerned more about the mess, so he gets to cleaning, and in response, Higuma attacks for a second time, creating an even bigger mess. Afterward, the bandits leave, calling the pirates cowards. Disappointed by the lack of alcohol, the bandits head to the next location in search of it. The pirates laugh at the altercation, but not Luffy. He is livid, shouting they are nothing but cowards for letting the bandits treat them the way they did. Shanks tells Luffy it's nothing to get worked up about, but Luffy doesn't want to hear any of it. As he leaves, Shanks grabs his arm to stop him, but just then, Luffy's powers manifest. His arm stretches beyond what is humanly possible. All of the pirates are absolutely flabbergasted by this. Lucky Roo shows a picture of a fruit to Luffy, frantically asking if he ate it. Luffy thought it was dessert, but he claims it didn't taste good. Shanks then tells Luffy he just ate a devil fruit, known as the gum gum fruit. Now, Luffy will never be able to learn to swim, since devil fruits take that ability away from their users. Luffy's jaw nearly drops to the floor. An unspecified amount of time passes. 
Luffy may have not known that he ate the gum gum fruit in that instance, but he states he is glad that he ate it. He goes back to the bar. It is now empty, but Luffy still hasn't forgiven Shanks, believing Shanks and his crew aren't as tough as he thought. Makino, on the other hand, thinks the way they laughed it off was pretty brave. Luffy disagrees, because he believes there are times a person should fight back. Just then, Higuma and the bandits return, demanding that they be served. Higuma and the bandits openly mock Shanks and his crew, calling them weak and Higuma states how he really wanted to kill Shanks. Infuriated, Luffy stands up for Shanks, declaring not to call him a coward. Makino then heads to the mayor, asking for his help to save Luffy. The bandits are ganging up on Luffy, though their kicks and punches aren't hurting him. Luffy demands they apologize. He throws a punch at Higuma, but Higuma evades then throws Luffy to the floor. He is fascinated by Luffy's rubber body and sees this as an opportunity to sell the boy. Luffy is livid, demanding that the bandits apologize. The mayor of the village arrived and sees Luffy being ganged up on. He apologizes on Luffy's behalf for his insolence and implores Higuma to let him go. While Higuma acknowledges the mayor's request, he declines because Luffy insulted him. Higuma is left feeling angered by this. The only outcome left is to kill Luffy, he believes. As Luffy is moments away from death, Shanks arrives. He knew something was wrong when nobody greeted him and his crew at the port. Seeing Luffy in this predicament, he sort of taunts Luffy, asking isn't his punch as strong as a pistol. Higuma appears annoyed that the pirates have returned and warns Shanks to leave. Instead, Shanks walks toward the bandits until one points a gun at his head. Shanks warns the bandit that pointing a gun at him means he's putting his life on the line. The bandit doesn't even seem to process what Shanks means by that, but it doesn't really matter because Lucky Roo shoots the bandit in mere seconds. The bandits are enraged, stating the pirates are fighting dirty. Ben Beckman reminds the bandits that they're no saints who abide by rules. After all, they are pirates. It doesn't matter if you throw food at Shanks or pour drinks on him. That is something he can laugh off, but nobody hurts his friends, regardless of the reason. Higuma does not feel intimidated. He sends his bandits to attack, and Ben Beckman insists he fights them alone. Ben Beckman makes quick work of them, dismantling the bandits, leaving Higuma alone and afraid. He attempts to reason with the pirates, trying to get them to understand that Luffy is the one who started the whole thing. Shank says that doesn't matter and reminds Higuma of the bounty on his head that he bragged about earlier. Higuma is now terrified, so his last ditch effort is to throw a smoke bomb to conceal his presence. Meanwhile, he makes his getaway with Luffy as his hostage. Shanks is dumbfounded, thrown into a frenzy because they got careless and let Higuma escape with Luffy. Lucky Roo calms his captain down. There is still a chance to save the younger boy, so they split up to search for Luffy. Elsewhere on the sea, Higuma has fled by boat. He knows who would have thought that a bandit would escape by sea. He still has Luffy with him, but he no longer has any use for him, since he was only a hostage for him while he escaped. Higuma tosses Luffy into the sea. Luffy plummets into the water. He struggles to stay afloat as Higuma laughs at him. Just then, a large sea beast emerges from the water. Both Higuma and Luffy are left powerless as there's nothing they can do. With no time to waste, the sea beast claims its first meal, Higuma. It then sets its eyes on Luffy chasing after him, chomping down with an immense force. However, to its and Luffy's surprise, Shanks is now in the water, glaring at the sea beast. The sea beast is paralyzed as Shanks looks at it. Shanks then only says two words, get lost. With that, the sea beast abides and delves under the surface of the water. Shanks is relieved Luffy is okay, but Luffy can't hold back his tears. Shanks may have saved him, but it cost him his arm. Although Shanks is not worried in the slightest about his arm, he is simply glad Luffy is okay. Fast forward in time, and Shanks' crew is now leaving the village once and for all. Shanks asks if Luffy is upset. He is, but he's not going to complain about it because he'll become a pirate himself. Shanks mocks Luffy, saying he doesn't have what it takes to be a pirate. Luffy states he does have what it takes, and he will become the next pirate king. Shanks is touched by Luffy's words, so in response, he leaves Luffy his straw hat. He wants Luffy to cherish the straw hat the same way he does, and return it to him once he becomes a great pirate. Luffy does his best to hold back his tears. Shanks and Ben Beckman are certain he will become a great pirate, and with that, the village watches as the pirate sets sail. Ten years later, 
Luffy begins his adventure as a pirate, with the villagers watching him set sail by himself in a wooden raft. His first ever obstacle as a pirate is the same sea beast that took Shanks' arm 10 years ago, though Luffy expected they would meet again. He's been training, and with one attack, he uses the first ever gum gum pistol we see knocking the sea beast out. He then declares that he will become king of the pirates. While continuing to sail the sea, Luffy finds himself in a life-threatening predicament. He's caught in a whirlpool, and there's no one around to help him, so he tries to think of something before he drowns. His raft gets sucked into the whirlpool. Then we cut to a remote island. The pirate, Alvida, finds dust on her ship. One of her subordinates apologizes for not thoroughly cleaning the ship and begs not to be hit. But Alvida attacks him with her mace anyway. Alvida asks a young boy named Kobe on her ship who is the most beautiful person across the sea. Kobe claims it's her, but it's obvious he doesn't mean it. Kobe is utterly useless as a pirate, she says, and the only reason Alvida keeps him around is because he knows how to navigate these seas. Kobe is constantly verbally and physically abused, but he tolerates it as much as he can in order to survive. Alvida yells at Kobe, telling him to go clean the washroom. He stumbled upon a barrel which he brings to the washroom, and the other pirates take it from him. To their surprise, Luffy hid himself in this barrel and broke free, shouting how he had a great nap. Alvida hears the commotion, so she throws her mace. It's powerful enough to destroy the washroom, and Luffy is sent tumbling away. She is furious they were slacking off, since she heard someone shout they had a great nap. The pirates then inform their captain that Kobe snuck an intruder on board. Alvida speculates that it's the pirate hunter Roar nor Zoro. Meanwhile, Luffy and Kobe get to know each other. Luffy hid in a barrel in order to avoid the whirlpool, and he needs another boat. Kobe is willing to give him the boat he's been building in secrecy for the past two years because he's too afraid to leave Alvida out of fear of what she will do to him. Kobe actually never wanted to be a pirate. He was just unfortunate and found himself walking into their grasp. Luffy laughs, calling Kobe dumb and weak. Kobe doesn't disagree, yet he acknowledges Luffy for being very blunt. When asked why Luffy sets sail, he says it's because he wants to become king of the pirates. Kobe is flabbergasted. Becoming king of the pirates is dangerous. You have to attain the One Piece and everything the world has to offer. All the pirates in the world are searching for the One Piece, so it's impossible for Luffy to do it, he believes. Luffy hits Kobe because he's annoying. He's not afraid to die if he dies following his dream. Kobe is touched. He wants to be like Luffy because it's his dream to become a marine. He's always wanted to capture Alvida and pirates like her. Alvida hears this confronting Kobe and demanding who he is going to capture. Alvida takes note that Luffy is not Roar nor Zoro. Luffy insults Alvida to her face, so Kobe tries to tell Luffy what to say in order to get on her good side. But before he does, he remembers what Luffy's dream is. If Luffy is willing to die to follow his dream, Kobe will do the same. He also insults Alvida. Enraged, Alvida is going to bludgeon Kobe. Kobe is frightened. He knows this is the end, but so be it. At least he died trying to take his first step into becoming a marine. Luffy rushes to Kobe's side and takes the full force of Alvida's attack, though it has no effect on him because he's made of rubber. With one punch, Luffy slugs Alvida with a gum gum pistol, knocking her out. Luffy tells Alvida's crew to prepare a bow for Kobe since he wants to become a marine. They abide and together, Luffy and Kobe set sail toward a marine base. They discuss Luffy eating a devil fruit and how he is heading toward the Grand Line, so he will need a strong crew. The first person he will ask is the pirate hunter Roar Zoro, who is on the marine base they are heading toward. Though Kobe is not as optimistic that Zoro will join his crew. Rumors have it that Zoro is a ruthless pirate hunter that wanders the sea. Luffy takes that into account but hasn't made up his mind yet because he wants to find out if he is a good person or not. Upon docking at the marine base, Luffy and Kobe grab some food at a local restaurant. They plan on going their separate ways, but before they do, Luffy wonders if Zoro is being held at the base. The civilians are frightened when they hear Zoro's name, so it looks like they can't say his name freely around here. Kobe says he noticed someone named Captain Morgan is in charge of the marine base here, and the civilians have the same frightened reaction. They then head toward the marine base on the island. Kobe wonders why they were afraid when hearing Captain Morgan's name, and Luffy says that he may be a bad guy, 
but Kobe refuses to believe that. This is because Kobe's character development in the Romance Dawn arc is him discovering that not all pirates are bad and not all marines are good. So that explains why he holds a black and white view on this matter. There's a wall in front of the marine base. They climb it to see Zoro being held captive. His evil glare petrifies Kobe. Zoro asks that they set him free and in exchange he will hunt down a pirate and give them the bounty. Kobe doesn't trust him, but Luffy entertains him, claiming Zoro can't kill him because he is strong too. Just then, a younger girl sneaks onto the ground as Zoro is being held captive and offers him some rice balls. Zoro acts somewhat cold toward her and tells her to leave, but before she has the chance to, Helmeppo, the son of Captain Morgan arrives. The rice balls look tasty, so he snags them from the girl. To his surprise, the rice balls are loaded with sugar. Out of disgust, he throws them to the ground and repeatedly stomps on them. Helmeppo shows a little care when the girl begins to tear up and lets her know she should have read the sign that nobody is allowed on this site because it's an execution ground. Therefore, he orders a marine to throw her over the wall. But don't worry, Luffy catches her. Helmeppo is surprised to see Zoro has made it this far, yet Zoro remains determined to make it through the month, reminding him to keep his promise. Helmeppo assures him that he will, and then he leaves. Luffy confronts Zoro. Zoro says Luffy should leave before the marines return. Luffy claims to be a pirate looking for a crew. He hasn't decided if he wants Zoro to join his crew yet because everyone says Zoro is a bad guy. Zoro has no intention of joining his crew and will survive the entire month without any help because he has a dream and will fulfill it no matter what. Before Luffy leaves, Zoro asks Luffy to feed him the rice ball that was pummeled into the dirt. It was truly repulsive, but Zoro stomachs it and tells Luffy to tell the girl that it was delicious. We find out her name is Rika and she's delighted to hear that he liked it. Kobe begins to rethink Zoro is not as bad as he is made out to be. Rika is confident that he is not. The only reason he's being held captive is because Helmeppo was terrorizing the town with his pet wolf. Zoro only killed the wolf because of the chaos it was causing. The only bad guys in this town are Captain Morgan and the marines who follow him. Anyone who disobey them are executed. As Helmeppo is taking a stroll through the town, the people are afraid, bowing down in his presence. Helmeppo has had his fun with Zoro, deciding he is going to publicly execute Zoro in three days. Luffy reminds Helmeppo of the promise he made to Zoro, but that was a mere lie. Enraged, Luffy attacks Helmeppo. Kobe attempts to hold Luffy back, but it's too late. He has made up his mind. Luffy is going to ask Zoro to join his crew. Helmeppo is upset. He's going to tell his father about this incident. Rika's mom takes her daughter away out of fear of being executed for associating with Luffy and Kobe. We then cut to Captain Morgan's office at the marine base. He declares that he is great, but be that as it may, the offerings from this town have been decreasing. The marine in the room says the people have their own financial problems, but financial problems don't concern Captain Morgan. To him, the people aren't showing their respect toward him. Helmuppo barges into the room. He wants his father to kill someone for him. Luffy sneaks back on a base. Zoro is adamant that he will not join Luffy's crew. Regardless, Luffy doesn't care. Zoro will join his crew in his mind. He asks if it's true that Zoro uses swords to fight, to which he does, but they were confiscated by Helmeppo. So Luffy will retrieve them, but only on the condition that Zoro would join his crew. Without giving Zoro a chance to speak, Luffy leaves to retrieve the swords. We cut back to what's going on with Helmeppo. As Captain Morgan has a statue of himself erected, Helmeppo demands his father to answer why he refuses to help him. Captain Morgan asks Helmeppo why he has never hit him before, and Helmeppo says it's because he's his son. Captain Morgan then hits Helmeppo and says the reason he didn't hit him before is because he's not worth hitting. At the end of the day, he only punished those who directly disrespect him. He is the one who is great, not Helmeppo. He asks about Rika and if Helmeppo killed her. He says that he didn't, so he commands a marine to go kill her, but the marine refuses to do so. Captain Morgan slashes the marine on the back, deeming him a traitor. Since he is the highest ranking marine on base, that means he is the greatest here, and great men don't make mistakes, so everything he does is right. As a symbol of his power, Captain Morgan commands the marines to raise his statue. Down below, Luffy spots people atop the building. He uses his powers to stretch his arms and fling himself to the top. 
Unfortunately, he overshot it, so he grabs onto the statue to prevent himself from going any higher. To everyone's surprise, he breaks the statue in half and casually apologizes. Enraged, Captain Morgan demands the Marines capture Luffy. Luffy kidnaps Helmeppo and makes his escape to find Zoro's swords. Down to where Zoro is being held, Kobe is setting him free. Zoro notes how they'll kill him if they catch him doing this, but Kobe now understands what the Marines in this town are doing is wrong. He still desires to become a Marine, but he will become a real Marine, just like how Luffy will become Pirate King. Just then, Kobe is sniped from afar. Zoro tells Kobe to leave while he has the chance. As long as he survives the month, they will let him go. Kobe then tells him that that is a lie. The Marines don't have any intention of letting him go, and they are going to execute him in three days. As well as Luffy. He's not telling Zoro to become a pirate, but if he teams up with Luffy, they should be able to escape this island. The Marines arrive, pointing their guns at Zoro and Kobe. Meanwhile, Luffy finds three swords, but he doesn't know which one is Zoro's. He looks out the window to see the commotion at the execution ground. Captain Morgan and the Marines are pointing their guns at Zoro and Kobe. Zoro may be strong, but Captain Morgan claims the pirate hunter is nothing before him. As the Marines prepare to fire, we get a flashback. A young Zoro has lost another match to a young girl named Kawina. Kawina has beaten Zoro 2,000 times, and Zoro has beaten Kawina zero times. Zoro and the rest of the students at the dojo are furious that they cannot beat Kawina. They accuse their sensei of training Kawina in secrecy because she is his daughter. Zoro is upset he can't beat her. His sensei claims it's because Kawina is older than him, but Zoro retorts she can even beat adults, so age is not the issue. Zoro shouts his dream is to become the world's greatest swordsman. While Kawina is training, Zoro challenges her to another duel, but with real swords. Kawina accepts, and the outcome is the same, making this her 2001st win. Zoro vents his frustration, but so does Kawina because in the long run, she will be the one to fall behind Zoro. Her father claims a woman cannot be the greatest swordsman because women are naturally weaker than men, and this notion depresses her because she will never attain her dream of becoming the greatest swordsman. Zoro rejects what she is saying. The reason he's been training so hard is in hopes that he can one day beat Kawina. So the idea that he could beat her one day through natural strength is absurd. They then make a promise that one day one of them will become the world's greatest swordsman, and this cheers Kawina up. However, grim news strikes the following day. Zoro is told that Kawina fell down the stairs and died. As a memento, he asks his sensei if he can have Kawina's sword, to which he allows. Zoro vows that he will one day become the greatest swordsman, so great that his name will be known even in heaven. Back in present time, Luffy grabs all three swords, and he uses Gum Gum Rocket to fire himself out the window and onto the execution ground. He lands in the middle of the line of fire. His body absorbs all of the bullets before repelling them away. He wasn't sure which sword was Zoro's, so he brought all three but all three belong to Zoro. Luffy says he will be an outlaw if he fights the marines here, but that's fine with Zoro because his only other option is to let the marines kill him. He changes his mind. He will become a pirate. Luffy is excited when Zoro joins his crew, but Zoro is more focused on being untied. The marines are astonished Luffy deflected the bullets. Captain Morgan claims he must have eaten a devil fruit. Since they can't harm Luffy with bullets, they will attack him with swords. Zoro is freed, and in a flash, he blocks all of the marines' attacks. He gives them one warning, and if they move, they will die. Zoro may now be a pirate, but he still has every intention to become the world's greatest swordsman, and he is not going to let anything stop him from that. He will set sail with Luffy, but if Luffy does anything to prevent Zoro from reaching his dream, Luffy must cut open his own stomach as an apology. Luffy is okay with this because the future Pirate King expects nothing less from the future world's greatest swordsman. Luffy uses Gum Gum Whip to attack the Marines. The Marines state that they are too strong, and they cannot defeat them. Captain Morgan doesn't know who said that, but orders everyone who has already admitted defeat to kill themselves because he has no use for weak soldiers. Several Marines actually are about to do it. Luffy rushes Captain Morgan, ready to take him head on. Captain Morgan swings his axe. With one powerful attack, he splits the fence in half. As powerful as he is, Luffy maneuvers his way around Captain Morgan and pins him to the floor, giving him a solid punch to the face. As a last resort, Hameppa holds Kobe at gunpoint, demanding Luffy to stop or else he will shoot. 
Kobe states that he is not afraid to die, and Luffy is ready to punch Helmeppo. Captain Morgan gets back up and is about to attack Luffy. Luffy knocks Helmeppo out with a gum gum pistol. Immediately afterward, Zoro slashes Captain Morgan, dropping him to the ground and defeating him once and for all. The two pirates have neutralized the tyrants who have been tormenting the town. Zoro asks the marines if they still want to fight, but they have no interest and celebrate Captain Morgan's defeat. Zoro collapses from exhaustion, so they go to the restaurant to replenish their strength. Their next move is to head to the Grand Line, but Kobe is worried because the Grand Line is extremely dangerous. He devises against going there, but Luffy and Zoro demand that they have to go if they seek the One Piece. Be that as it may, Kobe is still worried. Then, Kobe asks if he and Luffy are friends. Luffy assures him that they are, and Kobe is pleased to hear this since he didn't have friends growing up. Zoro reminds Kobe he needs to worry about himself. Even though he was just a small-time pirate as a chore boy, he was still a pirate and the marines could possibly get a hold of that information easily. If they find out, he may not be able to become a marine. In that exact moment, the marines come through the door, asking Luffy and his gang if they are actually pirates. Luffy bluntly states he just recruited his first member, so he is now a pirate. While they are grateful they dethroned Captain Morgan from his tyrannical rule, they cannot allow pirates to remain on the island, so they kindly ask them to leave. The citizens are upset the marines are exiling their saviors, but Luffy has no objections. He and Zoro casually stroll out of the restaurant while Kobe freezes as they pass by him. The marine asks if Kobe is with them. He half-heartedly says that he is not, but the marine doesn't seem convinced. He asks Luffy if Kobe is telling the truth. Without a second thought, Luffy blares out Kobe was a part of Alvida's crew for two years. Kobe is internally telling Luffy to be quiet, but he keeps going. Soon enough, Kobe punches Luffy in the face to get him to be quiet. Luffy grins punches Kobe back, then unleashes a flurry of punches as the marines tell him to stop. Zoro grabs a hold of Luffy. He tells his captain he went too far. The marines yell at them, telling them to leave immediately. They do. Kobe realizes Luffy did that for him, so he cannot let this opportunity slip from his fingers. He pleads to join the marines, even if it's just for chores. Another marine objects since they don't fully know his background yet, and he could be a spy since pirates have infiltrated the marines in the past. Kobe blurts it's his dream to become a marine. The marine tells Kobe to not think they know nothing of his history of being a pirate, but be that as it may, he will still allow him to join. Kobe thanks him for accepting him into their ranks. Luffy and Zoro reach the docks, ready to set sail. Zoro congratulates Luffy for his performance at the restaurant. The marines now shouldn't have a problem letting Kobe join them. Luffy believes Kobe will become stronger in the future. Kobe is standing behind them. He then salutes the pirates, thanking them, and he will never forget them for the rest of his life. Zoro says he has never seen a marine salute pirates. Meanwhile, Luffy is sure they will meet again someday. As the two set sail, a group of marines stand behind Kobe and salute Luffy and Zoro to show their thanks. The head marine says Kobe has some great friends, but they just violated marine code by saluting pirates. As punishment, they must go the next week without food. Luffy and Zoro head toward the Grand Line, but this is just the beginning. They don't know there are more and more difficult challenges ahead. Thus concluding the Romance Dawn arc. If you made it this far then go ahead and like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you want me to continue summarizing One Piece arcs then let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.